Gazette episode 4, 1114, part 1, take 1. The local ombudsman. Correct. What is it this time? Giving or taking? He's asking for some help. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Swain. Uh, could I have a word? Go on. Excuse me. It's tomorrow night in committee. Did you get anything at all? No, nah, except that it's all to be very secret. They'll be doing everything except pulling the blinds down. The new road? The ghost road, love. It would be easier to find the road to Samarkand. Oh, in this town? If they're deciding tomorrow night... Well, we still won't know. We'll keep it quiet, do all the legal stuff, and after that it's a handout. <laughs> don't look at me. I don't know any secrets. I may be getting a line on it from Tom. Well, he doesn't know anything, does he? No, but he's a mine of information, if you can talk to him for long enough. What, you can stand it? Yes. Choose one of your contacts. Keep pressing him. Hendricks? Yeah. I could do with some help, you know. Do you fancy Jim Hendricks? I'm strictly a union girl. So where were we, Mr. Swain? Two garages, three bathrooms. Clinton Street and Fenimore Street. And Theobald Drive. Garage and Theobald Drive, garage and Clinton Street, bathroom in Clinton Street, and two bathrooms in Fenimore Street. You think there's some reason for it? They wait six months for planning permission for the garages, then they're refused, flatly. But down in Frisbee Ward, they approved ten garages and bathrooms. Every application approved. Now, I, I'll accept refusal of the garages, Mr. Walters, but bathrooms are statutory. You apply for a grant and you get it, but not in North End. You think it's political? Well, when Council went Tory in May, North End Ward stayed Labour. It was not a majority, but they stayed. Now they get nothing. Could you prove that? I'm telling you facts. You should hear what people are saying, especially the women. How is the shop? It does well. They're good, honest people, Mr. Walters. They shouldn't be treated like this. Well, if you will set yourself up as a man who gets things put right. Thirty years behind the counter, you get to know people. And when they ask your help, you can't say no. How about that councillor? Hendricks, you know him, says now, does now. Do you know any reason why there have been so many refusals? No. How hard have you tried? I'll show you letters. Yeah, the carriages. I've been to Burrow Surveyor and Planning Committee. <laughs> At first they said they would look into it. They did, and that was the end. They didn't want to know. But this letter's dead. <laughs> Hello, Gazette. Frank Walters. Yes, they went over this morning. Oh, no, they didn't. I'll send them over right away. Mr Appleton wants to read the early galleys. Will you take them over? Sorry, Mr Swain. The bathrooms. I saw a public health department. It'll be no trouble, they said. Then they did nothing. I wrote saying it was statutory. They had to approve. <laughs> now they won't even see me. Maybe they've run out of grants. If it was that, they would say so. Do you know any reason why there have been so many refusals? No. Look, down in Fenimore Street, Mrs Goodison has four young children, six people in the house and no bathroom. According to the statute, they simply apply for a grant and they get it. Now we can't even see anyone at Town Hall. I'll tell you what, Mr Swain. Write a letter to the paper. I'll print it, and then we'll see what kind of response there is. Well, if we can't depend on council, we have to depend on Gazette. You can depend upon us, Mr. Swain. Aye. Well. well, he wasn't exactly pleased. No, I told him to put it in a letter. He was useful, though. Improvement grants held up for houses. Could be a line, couldn't it? The route of the new road. Yeah, but where, though? Round Fenimore Street. Looks silly to let improvements be made and then pull them down. Grants for new bathrooms. Bathrooms? Yes. Spend public money to build them one week, spend public money to wreck them the next. 
Well, it has been done, you know. From Little Acourt. Fenimore Street. And Clinton Street. And Theobald Drive. Now, they run in a straight line in the North End Ward on the outskirts of town. The route of the new road? Could be. Now, if we could find out where other improvements have been refused and where they've been allowed. Knock on doors. No, go straight to the town hall. Ask. Let them know we're onto it. Mrs. Goodison has four kids. No bathroom. And I bet the kids don't want it changed. <laughs> Lunch. What? Eating. Well, if you really mean lunch. Cross me heart. Hmm. Will you be lunching, sir? Yes, yes, I shall. Hartley? Yes. Oh, glad you took up membership. First visit? Yes, yes, it is. Mullins. Councillor Mullins. Chairman of Highways Committee. Will you join me, Mr. Mullins? I'd like to have a little chat as well. A uh, job. Bring me one of those, will you? I'll take it you'll join me for lunch. Thank you. I'd be pleased to. No. You know, your father always liked Glob. Preferred it to Dother. So I believe you. Yeah. Oh, you'll find there's a grand crowd here. And uh, Club's a good place to have a, a quiet talk. Progressive. <laughs> you know, as some of say, the town's run from here. So you've decided to come home and settle down for good then, lad? Yes. In uh, government, weren't you? In, in London, I mean. In Whitehall, yes. Oh, well, you all know what I'm talking about then. Chairman of our Works Committee. That's a very responsible task, Mr Mullins. Ah, George. Now, your father called me George. I called him James. Take it, it'll be the same road with you. Yes, of course. You said a responsible task. It is, I. And it's a difficult one at the moment. It's also been made uh, no easier by Frank Walters. Walters? New bypass. Well, sighting of them always causes trouble. Well, you know the reasons. There's always a target for inquiries and uh, protests and delegations to minister. Well, you know the kind of thing that happens. So, you see, that's why it has to be confidential. Well, there's been nothing about it in the Gazette. Has no, it? and we'd like it to stay that way. James, council policy and government policy, so that's why we're very glad that you're with us. Yeah. I don't quite get your point, George. Oh, well, you see, there's a danger point coming up. And uh, Frank Walters has been after it for months like a hound. You must know that. Mm. Oh, I said uh, young Woodward on it. He's had Bill Spence on it, trying to get to committee members, you know, because he's had no luck so far because no decision's been taken. But, well, the danger is, you see, that a decision will be taken fairly soon and it uh, may just not be to everybody's taste, you know. So it happened that one or two committee members might just say something out of turn. You expect it to be unpopular? Oh, well, everything you do is unpopular with someone, didn't it? No, 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 the town needs a road. County council will be solid behind us, most of town will be with us, but, well, you know, there's always someone who likes to make capital out of trouble. Like Walters? No, I don't mean that, no. Now, this kind of thing starts on the inside, if it's encouraged. Well, the same thing happens in Whitehall, I'll be bound. And what do you expect me to do? Well, you see, if there's a leak, Frank Walters will get it, so uh, we would be relying on you. Now, I am the owner of this paper. Frank Walters is the editor. Now, my father gave him a very free hand. There's been no change. Oh, well, of course, the trouble, James, is that your father uh, didn't understand politics, lad. Not like you. Now, you know as well as I do. Delays cost cash, and cash comes from rates. If Walters gets something, I can't tell him not to print it. If Walters gets some, I do. We sincerely hope it won't, of course. But if he gets something, we would expect him to support us. You think he won't? Well, that lad knows how to make trouble better than anyone in Yes, town. well, I don't interfere with him, I'm afraid. James, the owner is the owner, and the owner has got certain responsibilities... I mean, everybody knows that. All right. This new road is going to bring great benefits to this town. Now, the last lot started it, I know, it's about the only decent thing they ever did do, but we're going ahead with it, and we're going ahead fast. Now, if you like, I could explain to you the route it's going to take. Yes, if you don't mind, I, uh, I'd rather you didn't. Oh. 
Maybe you're right. Might look bad if you did, no. Uh, there's a telephone call for you, Mr. Hadley. Yes, I think. Excuse me, would you? Ah. Oh. Thank you. Is he with us? Well, he ought to be. It's civil servants cause us all the trouble, so you should understand what it's about. Seems a nice lad, George. Oh. George? Arthur? Hello. Hello, Jim. What are you doing here, then? Keeping an eye on you two. And Adley buttering him up, were you? Oh, no, 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 no. Just uh, finding out where he stands, that's all. Far right. That's where he stands, George. Shoulder to shoulder with you. Oh, well, maybe he does and maybe he doesn't. Did you want something, then? Nothing special. I did think you might invite me to lunch with Mr. Adley. I did think not. Oh, sorry, Jim. No, we've got business to discuss. Our bypass. The bypass. He's coming back. Oh, I'll tell Jim to do us a favour then, will you? Well, I'm off. Yeah. Some other time, perhaps. I do. Well, I'm sorry about this. I'm afraid I've got to go. Oh, you're not staying to lunch? No, yet? I'm sorry. I can't. Oh. Oh, well, before you do go, I'd like to introduce Councillor Franklin, Chairman of Ways and Means. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Franklin. George has been telling you about the bypass. Yes. Thought you'd be interested. Aren't we all? Well, you're interested in Crampshaw's engineering, too. I own a piece of it, yes. Well, that isn't talking out of school to say the road may run close to Crampshaw's. It should do them a bit of good. Would you excuse me? Arthur, I think you and I better go and have some lunch together. Uh. You said you'd take me to lunch. We'll order it, love. Pickles. They're not obligatory. Neither is your company. Hey, no. Work to do. What kind of work? You can have your choice. Garages or bathrooms. For <laughs> what purpose? For parking a car, I take a garage. Right, bathrooms. I'll give you the addresses. I have an appointment at 2.30. Madame Lelange, our favourite beauty consultant. She has just returned from Paris. Lelange? Where the hell did you get a name like that from? Her middle name. Her mother was French, First World War. I have to be there at 2.30 and not smelling of beer and pickles. Hey, love. Goodison's got a wife and four kids. Tough luck. What's the matter with Lady Jackson? On the beauty beaten hungry. Oh, so am I. Two rounds, please, love. Hey, right, Ted. I've got a good story for you. 27 Fenimore Street. A lady with four kids has got everything. A loving mother, lots of children. The court's been adjourned till this afternoon. I have to be there at two. very latest. I chose them in Paris specially and I think that these five in particular will be very popular but I want to keep them exclusive you understand. Do you mind if I take them down? You know you're a very pretty girl Susan. Thank you. I think this one is rather you. Oh yes. That is expensive, though. A petit cadeau. A little present from the house. That's very kind. Thank you. And um, I have something else for you as well. Something I found in Paris that I'd like you to try and to write about. Come. It's a new treatment and it's quite wonderful. But first, we must get all that stuff from your face. We must cleanse the skin thoroughly. There. So you're not bothered about the bathroom, Mrs. Goodison? Not really. But uh, you did complain to Mr. Swain. Mrs. Thompson asked me to. Why were in his shop? She wanted me to back it up. Mrs. Thompson? Aye, two doors down. Oh, same kind of house? Yeah. Have, uh, have any others been refused? All four or five around here. At least that's what they say. There's a lady in Thurston Street and one in, uh, Halton Place. 
Is there any that you know, love, who have been given a grant? Yeah, my sister for one. That's why we put in for it. She got one about six months ago. Oh, it's lovely. Built on. My husband said we got enough room out back, so we applied. And you were turned down? Mm. Where does your sister live, love? Just two or three streets away. Maxton Place. Have any others had grants? Oh, they nearly all have round there. That's why we asked for it. If you refuse, love, what will you do? Same as usual. Big bath. Tuesdays and Fridays bath parade. Oh, it's no trouble when they're young. Where are the kids now? Two are at school, and the two younger ones are down the playing field. What, the canal? <laughs> more than likely. Ooh, they can get right dirty down there. Ah, there's a face and hands mostly, and their clothes. But if you are refused, I mean, won't you cause trouble? It's not worth it. We'd rather wait for a council house. What, you're on the list? Been on it for years. Who did you see at the town hall? Mr. Uh, Liversdale. We saw him once. Second time they said he was out. And you've no idea why it's been held up? No. There hasn't been anyone round the streets with measuring tapes. Oh, uh, something to do with the gas mains, they said. I don't think he's worth the trouble. Uh, Mrs. Thompson. Two doors down, love. Number 23. Thank you very much, love. There can be many reasons for refusing improvements, and premises may not be suitable. Maybe legal objections, even objections from other tenants. What kind of improvements did you have in mind? Well, small improvements, like having a garage built up. Uh, private tenancies? Yeah. Well, that would be mostly permissions. Old houses that need bathrooms? There'd be no refusals. You want to bet? Uh, what area have you in mind? Anywhere in the town. I'm afraid that would take hours of search. I'll settle for North End Ward. Refusals? Yeah. Well, you'll have to see Mr. Johnson about that. Right, I'll see Mr. Johnson. Uh, I'm afraid he's not in today. What do you think? Totally good. Smell me. Oh, you smell like yeah. a... Yeah, I've been getting that from Bill. Do me a favour. Don't come into my office. I'd like a word with you, if you can spare the time. Of course. Tomorrow's press day, if I have all the time there is. I was at my club today. I met Councillor Mullins. <laughs> Mullins at the Albany? No, of course not. The Constitutional. Ah, uh, the club that thinks it runs the town. Yes, that fact was mentioned. By Mullins. Did he also mention that he was chairman of Iway's committee? You don't like him? Uh, not my sort of company. A bit stuffy. Look, I was put in a very embarrassing position. There's talk of a new road. What's your attitude to that? I have no attitude. I don't even know where they're going to build. Well, they're going to make a decision very soon. Tomorrow night. I also understand that it's both government and council policy that the deliberations at this stage should be private. Mullins is scared that I'll get wind of him. He's concerned, not scared. Now, look, since this meeting is confidential, I think I should be told how you intend to get this information. I don't intend to bribe anybody. Does that answer your question? Well, it answers the main part of it, yes. You know, Mullins wanted my assurance that you'd cooperate. Have you got an interest in it? I don't know. They seem to think I have. Mullins wanted to explain the route to me, but I wouldn't listen. Good. Now you know what it's like to be an editor. Mm. Why aren't you a member of the Constitutional Club, a fact? I don't want to spend the rest of my life dodging Mullins and his brethren. I see quite enough of them professionally. Where do you lunch today? Pub. Ah. Oh, I don't interfere with your editorial policy, but I am concerned about your social habits. I've got a regular table at the Milford Arms. Mm -hmm. I still think you should be just a little more at the centre of things. At the Constitutional Club? Yes. To take the weight off your shoulders? Now you know I'm interested, keep me informed, would you? Interested or embarrassed? Look, I could be deeply embarrassed if you took the wrong line. You smell like, like a... Like a French town. No, like a barber shop. Hey, Frank, I've got what we wanted. 
I've seen the ladies, permissions refused in six streets, and they all run in a straight line. Look, I'll show you. Uh, Fenimore Street, Clinton Street, Theobald Drive, Thurston Street, Moulton Place and Merchant Street. They all run in a straight line, all permissions refused or held up. And yet, the same improvements have been granted in Maxton Place, here and here. So to go to the town hall? Yes, I can make a check there in the morning. Is the member for North End Ward on the committee? Jim Hendricks, yes. If we're right, he's not going to like uh -huh. it. Well, single him out and keep pressing him. It's already done. Ted's seeing him in the pub at seven. Well, I want you to be there. Right, I'll be there. Cool. How far's it gone, Mr. Hendricks? To the committee stage, lad. You know that. If, uh, if you're against it, Mr. Hendricks... Oh, whatever makes you think I'm against it. Well, I, I just... Uh, I mean, if the Gazette want to offer to buy me a drink, I'm always willing, you know. Means nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, sorry I'm late, Jim. Ah. Uh, you've time for another? Uh, you've a committee meeting tomorrow night. Ah. Have you seen the plans for the new route? Talking daft, lad, of course I've seen them. A plug for a hint. No. Aren't you bothered? What makes you think I should be bothered? It's going through your ward. You're fishing, lad. You're trying it on the wrong man. I'm not fishing. Tom Swain's doing the fishing in your puddle. Swain? Yeah, he was in the office today with a batch of letters, complaints from your constituents. What complaints? Delays, hold-ups, improvements being refused. People don't like it, Jim, but they're going to Swain to help them, not to you. You are still fishing. Yeah, but it's a big fish, Jim. And it's beginning to show itself. I could show you the streets. They run in a straight line through your ward. Now you're guessing that's a dangerous game, you know. You can't be wrong. You're telling me I'm wrong. I'm saying no, as always. I thought you'd want to know. They're turning to Tom Swain. Now, he could stand for council next time with the right support. I'm still saying that. Guess if you want to. A democracy goes by majority vote. Yeah, but people don't like to be surprised by bulldozers. Ah. What time's the uh, meeting tomorrow night? 8.30. I'll be here at seven if you want to see me. Don't count on that. Thanks for the drink, anyway. It is always a great pleasure meeting the Gazette. Good night. <clears throat> What's all that about? The reaction of a worried man. He'll be here tomorrow night. Hey, and I've got something for you to do tomorrow as well. Right. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Swain. I brought the letter. Ah, thank you. You've been active about it. Ah, Spence was down talking to the women. He was down again this morning seeing Mrs. Goodison about the children. What's he up to, Mr. Walters? No. Who knows? It's a good letter, Mr. Swain. Concise, to the point. Thank you. I hope it gets them their bathrooms. Yes. What is he doing about these children? Ask him. Mum! The best clothes, did you say? Oh, I think so, Mrs. Goodson. Best clothes and all scrubbed and shiny. When will Andrew be home from school? Oh, about five past twelve. Oh. Well, if we leave here by half past, we shall be there just in time. Did you say there was a taxi coming? Yes. Oh, we'll bring you straight back afterwards. Oh, they're like that. Jeffrey, Sharon, shut up! Morning. Morning, Mr. Hadley. How's it going? Oh, usual Thursday rush. Well, you're on top of that, I hope. Yes, of course. Good, good. Because I'm inviting you to lunch. Uh, on press day. Yes, of course, on press day. Good lunch. Set you up. Where? The Constitutional Club. To meet Mullins. To have lunch with me. To be seen having lunch with me. Solidarity? You know, I've never quite known what that means. What are you leading with? I haven't quite made up my mind yet. 
One or two good things. A farmer up in the Dales thinks he's uncovered a Roman site. Yeah. I put Tom Davis onto it. Davis? Yeah, our local historian. Used to be a sub-editor here. Writes local history books. He's very keen. Or... Export team from Royal Mills just come back from South America. Flogging woolens. Some good orders. Good pictures. And the new road? I've made up my mind yet. It's supposed to be a secret, isn't it? Are you ready? Just leave a note for the staff. Ready. It is to meet Mullins. Mull ah. Well, we'll take what comes, shall we? Who's taking the pictures? Uh, Luthwaite. He'll be there at ten to one to meet Susan. Old Liverdale's a man of regular habits. Starched collar, rolled umbrella. Should be good. In this weather? What? Rolled umbrella. He never looks at the weather. Been here before, have you? Several times. Made a point of not coming back on the last occasion. You could be wrong, you know. Thank you. Oh, Jock, uh, bring me my usually. Oh, they are, James. Mm. Hello, hello. Brought the guests with you, have you? Are you, Frank? And George. That's right. It's all those first names at club, no matter what your position. So they tell me. <laughs> oh, just excuse me a moment, will you? <coughs> oh. Right, well, here's our health, then. I'll take it you'll be joining me for lunch, you and uh, Frank. As a matter of fact, yes. gonna... thank you. We'd be delighted to. Hello, James. Hello, Frank. Hello, Arthur. Still up uh, to story, a road, lad? No. Uh, oh, now, don't tell me that Frank Walters gives up. Well, I thought you got all the shutters down, got it all secure. Decisions made. We just have to wait. Oh, that's the way it has to be, lad. Don't tell me you've lost interest, Frank. In what? Well, I've never known Frank Walters not be interested in trouble. Only in other people's trouble. Oh, Mm. Frank, you see, there's a knack to it. Now, this is what you sometimes forget. Now, the town needs a road, right? So it's most good for majority and least numbers to get hurt. Now, that's not easy, you know. It's not easy at all. You may love be compensated, Frank, called rehoused. Has to be worked out. So, what's your worry? I'm not worried. Are you telling me who's to be rehoused? Oh, 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 no, you'll have to wait for that later. There's a bit of work to be done first. Well, it's very nearly one o'clock. I suggest we go into lunch. It's almost one o'clock. He'll be out in a minute. I must say, I never thought I'd live to see the day when Frank Walters is on our side, did you, Arthur? <laughs> Don't know what you're worried about, George. Town needs a new bypass, has done for years. Wherever it goes, somebody's going to have to be displaced. Can't be helped. No, just one of the hard facts of life. So, uh, what are you putting on the front this week, then, uh, Frank? Oh, I haven't decided yet. Farmer up in the Dales thinks he's uncovered a Roman site. I heard about it. Tom Davis has gone over. Right. Romans? Oh, you wouldn't put that on from the Gazette, would you? Export order for Royal Mills? Oh, that'll last for about a month, that one. It'll drop <laughs> in the ocean. No, no, choose Al. There's nothing to compare with Story at Road. I'm glad you see it that way, George. That's what I was thinking. What's that, man? The road's the best story we've got. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what I meant. 
Oh, oh no, there's an awful lot of work to be done after the decision's been taken, you know. You can ask after you. Government approval, legal aspects, value of leases, government grants, reallocation of housing, housing grants. It just goes on for months. Why must it be kept secret? It's not secret. Oh, no, no, no. Confidential, oh, but it has to be, because that's why everybody gets a fair chance. No, no, Frank, you've got no idea how many people on the make want this information so they can get him for the kill. That would surprise you, you know. No, it's never surprised me, George. Once you've made the decision, people on the make have their own ways of finding out. It's the people in the houses who are surprised. Oh, well, this is all done orderly and quickly. No, that's not the way it happens, George. You make the decision, you hand it over to the town hall. Now, they take all the time they want. They play it close to the chest. Take all the time they want until everything is cut and dried and there's no more time to make a protest. Well, there's a right to an inquiry. That's <laughs> not what happened to Swanley. <laughs> all right, now, look. I know we made a mistake there, but we put it right, didn't we? Oh, God, you made enough fuss off of that. Yeah, well, it was only then that you put it right. George, have you ever woken up to find a bulldozer at the bottom of your garden? pulling down the house across the way, to be followed by grinders and pushers and trucks and gangs of men. They start at seven in the morning, and you know it's going on for month after month. There's dust all over the place when it's dry, mud all over the place when it's wet. Nobody told you when it's going to start, when it's going to end, month after month. They don't like it, George. There's trouble for you. Whose side's he on, then? Look, huh? I'm not on anybody's side. I just see it as a service to readers. Service to ratepayers, if you like. A new road is going to be built. They should be told when and where. That, that's not for you to decide. Look, Frank. Now, let's just be sensible about this. Now, we have been more than careful. Now, if you like, I could uh, give you a hint. In confidence, that would assure you. The least inconvenience to town. What kind of a hint? Not in confidence now. Where the route is likely to be. Well, I know where it's going to be. <laughs> now, you can't know, lad, because a decision's not been taken yet. It's not a decision you're making, it's the approval of a route. I could draw it for you. How well, do you know this, son? I know part of it. The part that interests me. Well, you said you weren't interested. Curious. Oh, well, curiosity killed the cat. And I'll take that chance. George was going to tell you the route. For publication? No. Nope. Well, I don't need to be told. Oh, well, you, uh, you could be wrong, you know. Supposing you, you try it out on me. I could take you to the houses that have to go. In the North End Ward. Who told you this? It is me. It isn't a council arm. A lad up in the North End Ward has been collecting complaints. Now, he took them to the town hall, and he got nowhere. So he brought them to me. I've got a stack of complaints in my office. The trouble of the town hall is one hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing. And who is this, uh, lad? Well, it isn't a councillor. Well, James, this is the best route in the town. Now, we expected support. It is the best route, and I shall be supporting it. But I shall be publishing a map tomorrow. Well, I tell a lot of support, isn't it? Now, look, James, my committee have spent months and months investigating every possible alternative, and this is the best route in the town. It is the best route, I just said so. Ah, but if Frank here goes out and publishes a plan of it before the decision's final, we could have a public inquiry that will cost the ratepayers thousands and thousands of pounds. We'll come back to this route in the end simply because it is the best one, so why can't you wait until the decision's final? Because by the time you made the decision, every clerk in the town hall will know about it. Everybody on the make will know about it. Everybody except Mrs Goodison. Oh, the Hamlet's Mrs Goodison. <laughs> you look at your plan tonight, you'll see her house and all the others. Look, Frank, this is just a guess, you know. If you're wrong, you could cause a lot of trouble. It is just a guess, George. But as you said, who's interested in a Roman ruin? It's not official until it gets government approval. By tonight, Arthur, we'll know if we're on the right lines. Just a map, suggested route, no comment. <laughs> what's wrong with that? You ought to be on the council. You do know what's wrong with it.
Oh, you just watch your step. Yes, old Tom will write a book about it. If you were going to specialise, Bill, what would you choose? What is it? Oh, sports fixtures, Saturday's results. Hey, that was a long lunch. To the boss. Hadley. And Mullins. Hey, I've got that stuff for you. How did the uh, lunch go? <laughs> Same as usual. Frank Walters in the middle, everybody prodding him. How'd he get on at the town hall? Well, it confirms the six streets we already know, but it doesn't take us any further. Still just this part, from Fenimore Street down to Maxton Place. The trouble is, there's a lot of vacant ground down here and up here by the canal. Yeah, well, it's not good enough, is it? If it's going to be a pipe by bypass, it's got to have a beginning and an end. Shop improvements have been allowed down here, mostly shops and offices. Yeah, where does it cross the canal? Right through the brickwork. <laughs> I'd like to bet Jim Hendricks will turn up tonight and put us right about that. Why should he? He's never very talkative. He can't afford all the trouble it's going to cause, especially when they learn that he knew about it all the time. And I've got him worried that Tom Swain might stand for council. That's a thought. I wouldn't stand a chance. No, don't tell Hendricks. Mrs. Goodison and her four children. That's Liversdale, isn't it? Yep. What are you up to? Well, I think he might come and see me about it. And if we can get him here, then he might be helpful. Hey, I need that. You finish those sports reports. I'll do it now. Did you think it was clever, Miss Jackson? No. Then why did you do it? Were you responsible, Bill? Yes. I gave you two hours of my time this morning, going through the records, answering all your questions. What was the reason for it? Town hall, mostly. Are you going to publish this? She was one of your refusals. You know that I don't refuse anyone. Applications come in and I pass them to council. Council makes a decision, I pass on that decision. I've no authority to give or refuse. Why pick on me? What do you know about the new road? Nothing at all. That's a highways matter. Well, the information you gave me suggests that it'll be there. That is the line of refusals you gave me. Mm, that's rather smart. Yeah, it's quite cunning. Very good. Well, do you know anything else about the new road? Well, only the committee knows, and the surveyors department. But if a few mistakes by the committee help you to get a story, I never stand in your way. No. Nope. So why... Not often you visit us. Have you seen this? Thank you. I always like to be kind to our friends. Oh, you're interested in gardening, aren't you? Expert on presents. Well, I've won a few prizes. Why? New book on the subject. Wondered if you'd review it for us. Oh, I'd be delighted. Keep the book. About 300 words, just the Yorkshire part. Uh, it's a pleasure. You ought to come here more often. Thank you, and... Uh... Waste paper basket. <clears throat> uh, goodbye, Miss Jackson. What do you do that for? Keep friends and influence people. Well, I needed that for Hendrix to show him that people are complaining and he's out of touch. Well, you can do it without that kind of help. Yes? Where? Just a minute. Fire call. Dorlin's repository, North End Road, that furniture place. Two engines have gone. Frank Walters, who's that? Ah, yes. Right. Thanks very much. You've got a car, Sue. Dad? Take Ted, pick up Lethway, make sure he's got some stock this time. Get up to the North Road, Dorlings. Oh, man's got furniture there. Bit unfortunate. Come on. Not you, I want you. Give us a shot in about half an hour, tell me what it's worth.
Hello, Jim. What's this for? Enough to sustain you for the committee tonight. Ah, I shall need it. I've been checking up on Tom Swain. Could have saved you the trouble. I did my own check in, thank you. He's been busy, hasn't he? Yes. He was in about saying he can help. Not telling me. Nobody's telling you now, Jim, but complaints are piling up and it's all to do with the new bypass. Ah. Uh -huh. Haven't you come to tell me anything? I'm saying now, as always. But I've come to tell you this in case you get the wrong idea. I shall be voting against this new road. And my vote will be on record. You're against it? Oh. It's the best route there is. It's the only route, in fact. It'll have solid majority, never fear. So, one vote against it won't make any difference. I mean, George Mullins understands the position. But I'm warning you, my vote will be on record, whatever you may say about me. We're not saying anything about you, Jim, but we are making a guess at the route. Halford Place and five other streets through to Fenimore Street. Now, that bit looks bad for you, and it will be out before the voting is known. What are you getting at? Well, we don't know where it begins or where it ends. And I was thinking the complete route might put a better face on it for you. Oh, yeah, a great deal better face. And I can still say no. Well, give me a hint and let me guess. You're playing a game, lad. Truth is, Jim, I couldn't care less. I just thought it might help you. I could be wasting my time. If I wouldn't get a nod, it's all that stated. No more than that. No more. Start at three points corner on the one side, draw a line through to the part you know, to Emsley Roundabout on the other side. Straight through? No. Not exactly straight, so you haven't got it exactly right, so you can't say I told you, can you, but near enough. Where does it uh, cross the canal? Out by the north side of the brickwork. So there'll be no trouble there. It'll suit them all right. How much will it cost? Four lanes. You work that out for yourself. I must be on the way. But remember, no mention of me. Good or bad. Not a word. We've been talking about the uh, export order for Royal Mill. Ah. Well, that's a fine order, that is. You can mention me in that. Good night, lad. I'd better get started on this one. Oh, I'll drive you back. Where's Ted? He's over there. We're going back to the office. Can you make your own way back? All oh, right. You said from Three Points Corner? Yep. Through his ward to the roundabout. Crosses the canal here. Do you trust Hendricks? It makes a nice curve and it's how it should be. Yeah, well, I want another check. Well, we won't get one now, not for this time. What's the worry? Mr Hadley has an interest. Where's Ted? They're still down me down. He's waiting while I see the fire chief. How'd it go? Found out from roof to ground. Oh, we got a sack of pictures, though. Damage? They say about 200,000 pounds. Any casualties? No, but a lot of people lost a lot of stuff. Well, you do the intro. What's Ted got? Oh, facts and figures. The pictures will be about ten minutes. Right. It was quite a show. Yeah. How's your road to Samarkand? It looks as though you have put it up the creek. Well, I'm doing the lead, you do the facts, don't you? a bit you need. They think it might have started in a first floor office. The watchman was out for a pint. They've been complaining about an oil stove. Quote from Fire Chief, we've reason to believe that it started in an office on the first floor. Quote from Watchman, I've been complaining about the stove. Mm, well, you keep the quotes, and I'll do the descriptive piece, OK? Uh, <coughs> can I be of any help, love? You could find me some decent carbon. I'm not proud. Good evening, Mr Hadley. Good evening. You busy? Yeah. You didn't call me. Mullins did. Meeting's over? Yes, he got his approval, but he wants to know. Well, what are you leading with? 
A fire. £200,000 worth of damage. In the road? On the front page. Right-hand side, it didn't seem so arrogant. So aggressive, you mean? I've got a map here. Do you want to see it? No, thank you. I'd rather not. One check would help. You said you had an interest. I was told I had an interest. The information was gratuitous. But if you want it, you can have it. Well, it all helps. Does it run past Cramshaw Engineering? Yes, right past the front door. Yes, well, it looks as if you were right, then, doesn't it? You know, if I were you, I'd publish. Pictures from Luthwaite. Oh, good. Get Tavis in. He's good at maps. Get him to draw that out neatly. Take it down to the block makers. And uh, that one. The engineering works. That was your interest. They tried to infer it was, yes. And I got a free lunch. Solidarity? It all helps. Yeah, I wonder if Miss uh, uh, Jackson is free. Yeah, I expect so. Are we celebrating again? No. I wanted an inquest, actually. On oh, what? The woman's page. Well, it's not the brightest in the world. No, no, no. I'd rather like it. Sometimes I, um... I'm just not certain about this one, that's all. Well, you left it a bit late. That page has been moulded. You know, I do wish I understood your technical jargon. It's been cast, moulded, gone through the foundry. Through the fiery furnace. Well, that's rather apt, isn't it? Now, if Miss Jackson were free... Ah, good evening. We were just talking about you. You're giving me a rise. Would it stop you taking bribes? Now, what on earth are you... I really must not be so dramatic. You know, I never used to be. Must be the newspaper atmosphere, I suppose. I want to know what you mean. Well, I'll gladly tell you, but is that important? Now, Bill can handle this. Hang on. Bill! Run your eyes over that, will you? Four-column head. Topical enough to take 24 point. Yeah, but I'm doing page 16. Well, it'll keep you busy for a while, won't it? Well, shall we all sit down? Thank you. Thank you. I want to know what you mean. So do I. Very well. Why are we running a very long story about Madame Lelange and her beauty salon this week? Because she's important. Even famous in Westdale yeah. because she does go to Paris rather than pretend to. And because her beauty treatments, hints, etc. are of interest to our women readers. Is she advertised with us? Not much. A couple of paragraphs in the personal column. So I, as the proprietor, have got no interest in plugging her. Hmm? You can't mean she has to advertise before she gets written about. Well, it has been known, hasn't it? Yes, and I hate it, drumming up two dreary paragraphs because of some half-page ad about, oh, a refrigerator sale or something. But this was different. Yes. You got free a treatment that costs in the shops five guineas. Oh, perks. You get free theatre tickets. Pass it to the cinema. Free meals at civic banquets and places. But you said bribery are free tickets, bribery. No, they're not. They're different. Free tickets are an invitation to criticise a performance. We don't much. Well, in that case, I suggest it's time you did. But you said bribery. Overly dramatic. I withdraw the word. You better withdraw more than that. I'll not stand for accusations. Nor will I. No. Where did you buy that scent, Miss Jackson? From... No. She gave it to me. How did you know? I recognised it. It's very distinctive. It is also very expensive. But she said a present from the house. Would you be prepared to accept it as a present from me? Should I? As a token of apology. It wasn't very clever of you to accept it from Madame Sue. I'll pay for it myself. Oh, you are being hard on me, aren't you? And you're being beastly to me. And I have apologised. Now I shall apologise again. Now, a little graciousness from all you? All right. Yes, well, I suppose it's all I deserve. Because I'm still angry. I was a bit frightened, too. Caesar's wife should be above suspicion. In it. Just as well I've read Shakespeare. I'll be getting ideas. Can we get the woman's page back? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's not necessary. It's only a little fulsome. I don't think we need redo the whole page, do you? So, I'll see how Bill's coping with my fire. Oh, what shall I do about, well, paying Madame Lanorge? Ah, uh, well, leave it to me, eh? Thank you. I could hardly tell her I'd already done it myself, could I? How did our beauty expert take it? Very well. She's a very shrewd lady. Oh, um, you might send an advertising rep round to see her, would you? Ah, yes, thank you. 
on the right-hand side. It won't seem so aggressive. Yes, I'm interrupting you, aren't I? Yeah, you must lunch with me again one day. Shots 42 to 47, which involves, it's in the lounge of the...